to the DCCAP eSummit uh, Spring Edition, I guess. So hopefully everyone's doing okay. My name is Tim Deep. I'm the Customer Success Manager at DCCAP. I'll be hosting today. And next, we'd like to bring up uh, Laura Maida. She's the Director Industrial Distribution of North America at Norton St. Gobain. Um, Laurie, she's been with Norton St. Gobain Abrasives for over 25 years and held various positions with increasing responsibility in customer service, sales, national accounts, and industrial distribution, building partnerships for growth. Laurie strives to mentor her employees to see business from a broader view and become great leaders. Laurie makes her home in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and her topic today will be the future of women in industrial distribution and manufacturing. So Laurie, welcome to the stage. Thank you so much for, for coming. Thank you, Tim. Today we're talking about the future of women in industrial distribution and manufacturing. We all know that the industrial supply channel has long been a male dominated business. I see it changing slowly. And I wanna discuss uh, how we help advance women in our industry. There are still biases. We have women in management roles in marketing, accounting, HR, but women in sales and engineering and IT and even manufacturing management roles are still a very small percent. Hiring managers sometimes assume women uh, don't want to travel or women with small children um, wouldn't work the long hours that were needed. We need to talk with the potential candidates and determine their interest level before we uh, omit them from any list. Times have changed. Couples split family duties. I notice an acceptance of female customer facing roles um, has changed some in, in the last few years. Um, we, uh, 10 years ago, when I uh, would walk into a customer's manufacturing plant in the South, um, all work would stop. People would stare as you're being escorted back uh, to your meeting. And that doesn't happen now. I'm not even noticed, which is wonderful. And I think one reason is because there are some operations managers and female engineers on the floor. So it's more commonplace now. Um, despite making up more than half of all workers, um, women account for less than one third of manufacturing roles. And there's even less in management uh, in manufacturing. There's still about half a million jobs open in manufacturing right now. And a study by Deloitte and the Manufacturing Institute finds more than half of those jobs could go unfilled unless we attract, educate, and retain workers to fill them. And changing um, the way that we think about women in manufacturing is definitely something that could help. We need to get them qualifications and skills to help fill these jobs. Um, put simply, uh, the manufacturing industry is in a state of reinvention. Uh, they need to excite, educate, and empower women. Uh, it'll be crucial for the uh, future of the industry. There are several reasons I'm really encouraged. Um, change happens more rapidly in the next few years, I believe. And first, it's the rate of retirement, which is incredible. Uh, in the US last year, St. Gabon, my company, had 32 retirements in sales, engineering, and product management. That's a ton of experience walking out the door. Luckily, we were prepared for it, but it's also an opportunity. The baby boomers with outdated ideas in the industry will be leaving, and philosophies will change with new management, we hope. Um, there's also the talent pool now uh, where women outnumber males has grown and this has grown steadily for the last 15 years. Advocacy. I believe that the industrial community uh, needs to advocate for women uh, more openly. I know many don't uh, know where to start. They would like to. Uh, first, you have to acknowledge that there's a need. Um, I think you have to know before you can speak up, you have to listen ask what you know is stopping them from progressing in their careers and then you need to try to change any roadblocks that they mention um, if you're a hiring position manager um, commit to interviewing more women and adding more diversity to your organization call out bad behavior when you see it because there is still some out there um, you know in the next few years i think that there are a lot of distributors that have daughters that could be stepping into the owner or president's role um, we need to think differently. Uh, the best management candidates may be women. They haven't always been considered. We need to provide opportunities and offer new and intermediate level females some leadership training. Now there are many summits out there that have education sessions. They're virtual or hybrid and the cost is very low. So it's something that most distributors could do. 
awareness. I believe the key to more women in the industrial uh, business is creating awareness. Um, there's career opportunities for women at all levels, um, starting at universities, Purdue, Texas A&M, Nebraska. These are all uh, schools that have you know, programs in industrial distribution. Um, these are people who actually went to school to be in this business. Um, I didn't think about going to college and thinking, oh, I want to manage distributors that sell grinding wheels when I grow up. And so I think like many, um, I stumbled across this business um, and it's, it's been it's been a nice business. Um, most distributors and manufacturers I speak with are having trouble uh, finding suitable applicants of any gender. Um, the best way to get better access to these top students is to volunteer to speak with classes about your business. I speak twice a year at a local university to their international business class. And in turn, the pro professor comes and speaks at some women's groups where I need them to talk. Um, my company attends several career fairs around the country each semester. And there's always someone from HR there, but we began uh, bringing someone from sales or engineering as well to prompt questions um, and see if there's any answers that they're, you know, anything they're curious about. I suppose you bring, I suggest that you bring some early career um, employees to the fair with you, because I think it's uh, important for the students to see that there's people who look like them that work for your company, and so it might help them consent, consider you know, the business. Um, I have a friend that's a next gen, and she mentioned to me that um, things are different now. What she looks for before she goes to an interview, when she's asked to interview anywhere, she considers in the interview and she looks at their website. She reads their value statement. She looks to see if it's antiquated. She says, if it is, she thinks the company would be too. It's a first turnoff. She looks at the leadership team's images and she sees if they're representative of diversity. Then she looks at their online presence, which we've talked about. She looks at LinkedIn and Facebook and she looks to see if it's current or outdated. If uh, they're a publicly traded company, she looks at their finances to see if they're growing. This surprised me when she told me this. This is not anything I would have considered. <laughs> uh, so hiring is different, definitely change and interest of um, new employees have changed a lot too. Training. Once we have these women in our business, if we find them and recruit them, if they're new to the industry or if they're experienced talent, make sure they have resources and connections at many levels, including male allies. That's very important in our business. Um, your company's culture is also important for new employees and for experienced ones. We've been lucky enough recently to find some experienced uh, sales and engineers and analysts uh, from companies that had furloughed last year. Both the experienced and the new hires, um, they need mentors. Mentors are essential, I believe. It doesn't matter if the mentor's male or female, uh, they just need to have some value to offer. Women seek out colleagues they can check in with. I've had a few mentors in my career um, some formal and some that um, I just admired and sought them out myself. My best mentor was a male and I learned from him, it was not gender related. What I learned from him was the strategy of the business. I was lucky enough to find strong women for the gender piece that I needed. Retaining. So it's essential with any employee, but more crucial with next gens to understand your company's career promotion timeframe. This was discussed earlier. Um, ours is very long, three to five years before they're promoted. This is really long for some next gens, uh, and we lose a lot of them around the three year mark. Um, I think that what you have to do to keep them uh, challenged and engaged um, is let them know there's opportunities out there. Um, we find a, uh, assigning a stretch project or asking them to train some of the more mature employees on systems and um, you know, other things they've learned recently helps. Um, and when they handle these projects, if they handle a long-term project and they do well, you soon recognize the ones that with potential, uh, potential to lead. And these are the ones you want to invest in, invest money, time, and training. It's critical to retain them and have a bench of exceptional talent to fill management positions for the future. We know good people will leave if they have bad managers. That happens a lot. And Sometimes now if they don't feel connected or if they think they don't have growth opportunities, they're looking. It was mentioned earlier that the um, tenure at any company is much shorter than it used to be. Used to we had long-term you know, lifers and now three, four years is, is kind of you know, how often they turn over. 
So it's an interesting change. In the industrial distribution channel, it's moving forward. And I think women are a big part of it. We all know that diversity breeds in innovation and the statistics show that businesses with more women managers uh, on boards and C-suites, um, they're more profitable. Uh, research suggests that um, pursuing uh, policies that help women in their midterm careers might be even more effective than addressing board memberships or C-suites. The result of policies that facilitate uh, women rising through the company's ranks, um, they help. Um, you know, if we could educate girls better, um, be more supportive of childcare policies, and um, more rigorous application of anti-discrimination would also help. We need to reach out and find female job candidates. We need to make them aware of and interest them in our businesses. Uh, we wanna train them and provide them a strong network of experienced women, someone they can learn from and network with. There are many industry groups now, women industrial supply, um, there's women electrical, uh, women in manufacturing. Uh, there are plenty of resources out there to help support the women in your business. I'm really excited about the future of women in our business. Thank you for your time. And thanks to DC Cap. Thank you so much, Maida, uh, Lori, uh, for the great presentation. It just is really good to see the rise of women in the industrial distribution space and manufacturing. So I uh, can't wait to even meet you at the next event once uh, COVID kind of winds down and everything uh, to have these on-site events again. But uh, for now, just thank you so much for joining us and having a great presentation. Thank you. Bye. That's it. That's all we have for now. And hopefully, uh, you guys to stay tuned for our next e-summit in November. We do have e-sessions on a monthly basis on uh, specific case study examples. And I think for the one for, Ju for June, we'll be more on the uh, Jansan industry. So the Jan uh, janitor and sanitation industry. But that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for, for all your time. And uh, we'll, we'll see you guys again. Stay safe out there. Bye, guys.